Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and another episode of Dear Nero, which of course is the weekly series here on my channel, where subscribers send me in fan mail and or fan questions and I do the best to answer them. I want to preface this entire video by thanking you guys for all the support you guys gave me yesterday because yesterday was my birthday and you guys uh, definitely went out of your way to send a lot of positive tweets, a lot of positive messages and comments here on my YouTube channel. I want to thank you guys all for that, turn 24, and uh, yeah, definitely feel like an old man, but I want to thank you guys for all the happy birthday wishes. That's definitely awesome of you. Well, we got some Black Ops 3 gameplay, which I've been playing a ton of lately, as well as Fallout 4, guys. I'm telling you, Fallout 4 has been consuming my existence lately. It's kind of like, uh, it's a really tough balance going between Black Ops 3 and Fallout 4, because I want to play both of them so much, it's just ridiculous. But they actually announced that there is going to be Double XP Weekend, although I suppose it's not much of a weekend. It's going to be starting on Thursday, then it's going to be ending on November 23rd. It's just going to be like a five-day weekend uh, kind of a thing. We're going to be getting Double XP in Black Ops 3, and that's going to be pretty awesome. Definitely going to be playing a ton of like up three with that but without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's hop into the questions for this week's episode of dear nero the first one he is going to write dear nero now that black ops 3 has been fully released and you've had some time to enjoy the full version of the game i was wondering if and how your thoughts differ from the time of the beta to the full release of the game keep up the good work and thank you jack from canada so jack i'd say the biggest difference between the beta version of black ops 3 and the full release version of black ops 3 that we're playing right now is most of my worries have been put the rest that's one thing you always have to wonder about when you're playing a beta or you're playing an early build of a game is what is going to change what's going to happen when they add the rest of the game to the game yeah you know, what happens when they unveil everything and they put everything in there at once what's that going to be like what are the other multiplayer maps going to be like that we didn't see during the beta what are the weapons that we didn't see during the beta going to be you know how is all that stuff going to end up working how is the meta game of call of duty going to change once it actually begins you know what perks are going to rise to the top and become popular what guns are going to become very popular what are going to be the best maps where is going to be the best way to play on those maps. You know, how is all that stuff going to change? And overall, most of my worries have just been really put to rest. Black Ops 3's launch has been very nice. It's been relatively smooth, uh, given there have been some bugs and some glitches. You know, sometimes there are some connectivity issues, and sometimes when you would join a game or something like that. Like, I've had 9-on-6 domination and 6-on-6 six six domination. I think it's just a problem with the matchmaking, whereas, like, a party of four will join, and it will accidentally throw it into a game where there's like, already five people on a team and stuff like that. So, We've had a couple of little hiccups in terms of the matchmaking and the connectivity, but overall, the launch of Black Ops 3 has been fairly smooth. If you guys remember back, like, all the way back, Call of War, World at War, Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops 1, like, Call of Duty typically has a terrible launch. Usually, it's, like, horribly uh, laggy. Usually, there's some really weird glitches. Like, I remember, what was it, Black Ops 1? Was it Dead Silence? That, I guess, was called Ninja in that game, but didn't that perk just not work whatsoever or something along those lines? Like, there's a bunch of audio bugs in the original Black Ops, and, like, it, overall, compared to even other Call of Duty games, or just compared to most games that are released now, even in 2015, Black Ops 3 is a pretty good launch. I feel as though the game itself is very balanced. It's one of the best Call of Duties in years. If not, it may be the best Call of Duty. I think it's way too early to call it that, but it definitely has the possibility to be one of the best Call of Duties ever because it has been fantastic thus far. I'm excited to see what the longevity of the game is actually going to be like. Next question. He is going to write, Dear Nero, what is your take on marijuana legalization nationwide? Personally, I support the cause as it has been used to treat cancer and other diseases. Also, there is an extremely small amount of weed-related deaths worldwide. Crime rates have dropped in the states that have legalized it for recreational use. Also, I may or may not be a stoner. Keep up the good work, Chris from Texas. So Chris, my opinion on the idea of a universal legalization of marijuana. I would say I'd be for it. I would be for the legalization of marijuana nationwide. I'd be perfectly okay with that. If they were to do that, I think they could actually tax it. And if they're going to have alcohol be legal, you might as well have marijuana be legal. It just seems to make sense. I don't think that people should be getting tried as criminals if they get caught with a little bit of marijuana and stuff like that and just I think they should they should legalize it sure why not legalize it and keep in mind I'm not a pot smoker I don't smoke pot I have uh, in the past I think I've done it probably half a dozen times or something like that and that was while I was in high school and keep in mind like I mentioned at the beginning of the video uh, I just turned 24 yesterday so I've been out of high school for a while so I haven't uh, smoked marijuana in about a decade or something like that and um, I will say I'm not a big fan of it personally like while I'm okay with them legalizing it because I, the way I figure if they're going to legalize alcohol and alcohol is going to be legal then you might as well have marijuana be legal as well because it's just as bad if not maybe a little bit better uh, some people kind of uh, view marijuana as if it's some kind of like a health food 
<laughs> like it's basically the same thing as exercising, but that's really not the case. Obviously, there are some downsides to marijuana, but I think if you compare it to alcohol, it's marginally a little bit better in terms of like the effects it can actually have on your body. So if you're gonna have alcohol be legal, you might as well have marijuana be legal. I will say, and again, coming from somebody who's not a pot smoker, I will say that I don't particularly like marijuana. I don't like what it does to people at the same time. You know, I, I don't like associating with pot smokers the same way I don't like associating with people that drink alcohol. It's just they're not sober. They're different people when they're high as compared to with people that are also different people when they've been drinking and just I don't like being around those people I've had a lot of instances in my life where people that I know start getting into marijuana and that led to other things and suddenly it has completely ruined their lives like I do know some people who occasionally smoke pot and I won't call them out here in the video or anything but I do know some people that occasionally smoke pot it's a very small part of their lives and it doesn't bother them it doesn't affect their lives negatively whatsoever then I also know some other people who again I won't mention these are also close people in my lives where it's kind of really taken over their lives I know people who have gone to jail for marijuana I know people that like started with marijuana then they start going on to other things like they started doing pills suddenly they're starting to do heroin suddenly they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff they've done cocaine I know people who do cocaine which is crazy to me because growing up, cocaine was always like the boogeyman drug. Like, oh, nobody would ever do that, you know? And then I realized, like, how many people I know have actually done that. And it's like, what? How does that, like, why would you guys do that? So I just don't like the whole, like, uh, the vices scene, I suppose. I'm not a fan of vices. Like, I don't have any vices. I used to smoke cigarettes, you guys know. Uh, well, I guess the majority of you guys know, but I gave that up a couple years ago. And uh, I don't like vices. Like, I'm not addicted to anything. You know, I don't smoke marijuana. I'm not addicted to nicotine. I don't drink alcohol. Like, I don't really like any of that stuff. So, I, well, at the same time, I'm kind of conflicted. I don't personally like any of that stuff. But at the same time, I can see that it's probably for the best that they would legalize it. That way, people can stop going to jail for it. And that way, you can actually start taxing it. You can make the economy a little bit better. And so on and so forth. So, yeah, I think it would be uh, beneficial for them to universally legalize it. Which I think is going to be coming. More and more states seem to be legalizing. I think Ohio just recently voted something like that and um so it's probably going to happen in the future in our lifetime for sure uh universal legalization of marijuana is going to happen but will i partake in it like that's a question i get a lot is if that were to happen I, no i just don't like i don't like it and i don't like just being around it i i just i'm just not personally a fan of it but at the same time i think it should be legal so i guess i'm a bit uh, conflicted in that respect next question he is going to write dear Nero, i was wondering what your opinion is on virtual reality video games that could possibly be coming in the future such as the oculus rift how do you think they would work and do you think that you would like them if so do you think you will like them better than the video games that we have now or even possibly way 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 in the future do you think that they could make gaming as we've always known it obsolete keep up the great work zach from north carolina so zach what is my opinion on virtual reality video games i love the idea of it but i don't think it's going to be something that happens for a very long time uh, virtual reality video games is so hard to do and the reason why it's so hard to do is because the barrier to entry is ridiculous to try and get into that if you want, like, an Oculus Rift, like, it's a very expensive endeavor to get into. If you want to start playing games that are designed to be virtual reality, like, you have this, this headset on, essentially, that's going to put you in that world, you need to have a game that kind of works with you moving around, but at the same time, you're going to be sitting. Like, you don't want to have a game where your character is, like, just not doing anything, which says a lot of people think that you're going to need to have, like, an entire gaming space, like, an entire room dedicated to virtual reality gaming. And that's because you kind of do, because a lot of games don't work out well if you're trying to move around in the game while in this virtual reality but at the same time you're sitting in a chair and now they're starting to try to put together devices where you can kind of like sit like on a treadmill or something like that so you can actually walk in real life and that'll make you walk in the game but at the same time you're not actually walking in real life you're just on a treadmill and like there's just a lot of equipment to get this to work right it's very expensive whereas if you buy an xbox you know <laughs> how easy is that or you buy a pc or a, a ps4 or whatever right? it's very simple uh the gaming peripherals that we have nowadays whereas if you look at something like the oculus rift while there has been some really cool stuff i've personally never actually uh used one it's very expensive to even get into that thing i'm not going to get a dev kit or anything like that but if you just like look at some of the stuff that you can do with the oculus rift some very cool ones they have are like a roller coaster simulator almost like you put on this oculus rift you feel like you're on a roller coaster and you know it's like taking you all throughout it and whatnot or there's like some really scary ones like you're like in the ocean like in a cage and there's like a shark bashing up against the cage and it freaks you out because you really feel like you're there and you can't break that barrier of oh this isn't real this isn't real it feels really real because you're wearing this virtual reality headset it would be cool i 
I would love that, but I think we're super, super, super long ways away from actually being able to uh, make that kind of a reality, whereas it's as common in the everyday household as an Xbox, as a PlayStation, as a Wii, you know, and stuff like that. So I think we're a very long way away. I think it's going to be something that uh, is going to continue to progress in the future. Like, people have been talking about, like, this Oculus Rift. They've been talking about virtual reality stuff for years now. But it really seems like they haven't really made any actual progress towards making it a common household feature that actually works and developers are actually be able to develop their games for and whatnot. Like, I would love a virtual reality, like, Fallout game. That would be freaking cool. Like, if it actually was, like, a complete and first person, actually felt like I was in the world, like, I would, I'd have to physically, like, turn my head to look around and whatnot. That would be cool. I wouldn't like the whole, like, running across the wasteland part, but I think it'd be cool to be in that world. I think it'd be cool to be in any world, right? That would just be awesome. But it'd be very hard to make that work, and I just don't know what they're going to do. I mean, technology has surprised us before, so fingers crossed. I think that we're several years away from it kind of being, like, a like a typical household thing where like a lot of people have it you know and not, not just like uh, occasionally people on the internet like you see a lot of youtubers and streamers that will occasionally have like an oculus rift or some kind of like a uh, virtual reality thing and they kind of like they either stream it or they make videos out of it or whatever that's because that's kind of like what they do you know it's like it's like a business expense to them they buy this really expensive thing and they make videos out of it and then they occasionally use it every now and again but just right now it is uh, not where it needs to be and i'm hoping in the future it does because that'd be pretty cool do i think it'll render our gaming that we know it right now obsolete probably not i mean how like certain games just don't work with virtual reality they just don't like what about platforming games like a very popular game right now was like super mario maker a lot of people are loving that how do you do that in like virtual reality like a first person mario game like that would be cool but like <laughs> it would just be weird like there's a lot of games that just don't work in that respect i think there's going to be games that are going to be made specifically for virtual reality which we've already seen for the oculus rift and uh yeah again they're just they're, i think we're a very long ways away from actually making a household thing but i would love for that to happen but i don't think it's going to render other forms of gaming obsolete the same way you know PC gaming hasn't rendered console gaming obsolete the same way console gaming hasn't rendered mobile gaming obsolete the same way mobile gaming hasn't rendered board gaming obsolete and things like that so um yeah I guess, I guess that's my general overarching opinion I suppose of uh virtual reality gaming and the oculus rift next question he is going to write Dear Nero, I have seen recently that a lot of big YouTubers have moved from Xbox One to PlayStation 4, and I was wondering why that has happened, and the answer is appreciated, and this guy goes by Feeboy Gaming. So Feeboy Gaming, the reason why I feel anyway, a lot of big YouTubers, streamers, and pro players and things like that have moved to, from Xbox One to PlayStation 4 is because Call of Duty itself has transitioned a lot of its extra stuff to PlayStation 4. So if you're a competitive Call of Duty player, you know, the esports scene is on PlayStation now. They moved that over to PlayStation. Sony has that deal now. The esports stuff is going to be played on PlayStation. So therefore, you're going to see a big transition there. And also, in terms of like non-competitive stuff, they also moved the DLC stuff over to PlayStation 4 as well. And so as a result, a bunch of YouTubers and streamers and stuff like that, they're also going over to PlayStation 4 because that's where they get the DLC first. And yeah, so they're playing over there. Also, inherently, the PlayStation 4 runs a little bit better than the Xbox One. I believe it is actually like full-on 1080p, whereas the Xbox One is like 900-something P. I could be wrong on that, but um, yeah, I think I guess there's a couple reasons why people moved over to PlayStation 4. Myself, personally, I have a PlayStation 4. I have an Xbox One. I still play on the Xbox One because that's where my friends play. At the end of the day, that's where my friends play, and wherever my friends are, that's where I'm going to play. You know, I, I, I don't care too much about the extra the extra couple pixels of resolution. That doesn't bother me too much. Uh, I don't care about the DLC coming early. Like, I sure, I'll play the DLC when it comes out on the PlayStation 4, sure. That's fine, but there's no reason for me to do, like, a full-on console transition over it. Like, why would I do that? Like, I make... How many DLC videos do I make every single year? Like, 10? Maybe? <laughs> like, I make a video, like, I make some trailers of the DLC, but I don't need to have the console to do that. I will, um, actually, like, do reviews of the maps in the DLC, but that that's no reason for me to do a full-on console transition. So, I figure, hey, I'll stay on my Xbox One primarily. I'll occasionally play on the PlayStation 4, and, uh, yeah, there's no real need to make a full-on transition. And I'm, not, I'm not an esports person. I don't play competitive Call of Duty or anything like that, so there's really no need for me to make a transition, but the majority of people that have made transitions are for either the DLC coming early, because 
because that's a YouTube thing. And they've also made that transition over there because they want to be part of the competitive Call of Duty scene. Next question. He is going to write, Dear Nero, I haven't heard much from you lately about your Mos Nagant, and I'm interested in purchasing one. I was wondering if you think it's a good weapon, or should I save up for another type of gun? Also, have you been out shooting it recently? Thanks, Jack from Wisconsin. So, Jack, I'm going to be taking you out here soon, actually. Um, if you guys aren't aware, the Mos Nagant, I guess I should cover that part first. Mos Nagant is a World War II Russian infantry rifle, sometimes associated as a sniper rifle, depending on the particular one that you have. I have a Mos Nagant 9130, which was an infantry rifle made in 1943. It was used uh, by the Red Army during World War II. I don't know if my one specifically was used during World War II, but the thing about Mos Nagant rifles is they have been so ridiculously mass-produced during World War II by the Russians that there's still so many of them out there in circulation that you can get them for like a hundred bucks. Like the price of like a like a video game at the season pass, you can buy this World War II rifle and it's freaking cool. It's a bolt action rifle. I love it. It's got the red army hammer and sickle like engraved on it. This thing was actually used or maybe used it. You never know. It could have been a boot camp somewhere. But it was actually, you know, part of World War II. It's a piece of history and I like it. I haven't shot it in a while, but I'm gonna be shooting it soon because hunting season's coming up and typically people just go shooting for the sake of shooting around this time of the year anyway. It is November. And uh so I'm gonna be shooting it soon. Uh, I'm gonna be uh dusting it off I suppose and the reason why I bought it was one, it was like a hundred something dollars. It's a big piece of history I love that. I can just kind of ha like have it over there in the corner or I could put it up on my wall or something like that. And I have that piece of history. It's not going anywhere. And they're not making more of them. While they've been ridiculously mass produced, there's so many of them out there. At the same time, they're not making any more of them. So it's like they're also kind of in short supply because they're not making more. It's just I figured while they're cheap, why not? Let's grab this thing. It'll be pretty cool. It's a fun gun to shoot. It, uh, it's loud. It kicks. But at the end of the day, should you save up for a different type of gun? It depends on really what you want to do with it. Typically, you're not going to hunt with a Mos Nagant. It's uh, the round on it is just so big you're gonna like if you're if you're like hunting deer it's like <laughs> there's no point man why would you why would you kill a deer with this thing the round is really big i think it's a 7.62 by 54 r is the round on that thing and it's like why would you like it just seems like overkill to me and um it's a fun gun to shoot but ultimately it comes out to what do you want to do with it typically when you purchase a firearm it's typically because you want to shoot it every now and again but it's really not that great of an investment like sure you can buy a weapon for home defense a World War II Russian bullet action rifle is typically not going to be great for home defense. So if you want to buy this thing, you should buy it knowing that you're going to just be using it to shoot every now and again. And at the end of the day, it is a bullet action rifle. Like if you don't care about the history and like the the backstory, I suppose, of the Mos and the Gaunt, then it's probably not going to be the gun for you. But for me personally, I love World War II. I would love more World War II rifles. Like I would love an M1 Grand. That would be freaking awesome. Those things are several thousand dollars, so I'm not going to be purchasing an M1 Grand. Uh, although I guess not going to get any cheaper because we're not making more of them but um you know there's a lot of world war ii weapons out there like i would love a tommy gun an stg 44 i would love to see you know i have a mosin the gump i would love to see like a springfield i would love a 1911 even though like there's a lot of 1911s now i would love like an old school 1911 from like back in world war ii like i just love world war ii and i love the history of it and i was uh, it was awesome to me the fact that i could get a world war ii rifle like the russian mosin the gun for so cheap because again they're like they're like between 100 and 125 dollars like anywhere you look like they're ridiculously cheap so uh, yeah, I guess that's uh, the long and the short of my Mos Nagant. Haven't shot in a while, going to be shooting it soon. And should you buy one? It depends. Uh, do you want to spend $100 not counting ammo, which they will make you buy a spam can? Holy crap. And so I have this picture, right, that I've shown you. It's a picture of me. That was the day I bought my Mos Nagant. And they made me buy a spam can with it. Well, they didn't make me, but the special round that the Mos Nagant shoots, the 7.62 by 54R, they don't just sell that in like a little tiny box like it's normal ammo. They sell it in a freaking spam can, which almost costs as much as the freaking gun itself <laughs> like it's ridiculously big and uh i have i have enough ammo for this thing to last literally a lifetime there's no way i'll ever go through all those uh all those bullets but um yeah, if you buy this thing, you're buying it for the history. Um, if you want to shoot it, it's a bolt action rifle. And it's as fun as any other bolt action rifle is to shoot. But um, yeah, I buy, I buy it for the history. I buy it for the fact that it's a World War II rifle, and I'm happy with my purchase. Next and final question for this week's episode of Dear Nero. He's going to write, Dear Nero, have you ever heard of Jimmy Kimmel's mean tweets, and would you consider doing a reading of your meanest slash dumbest comments? Also, do you think that since Black Ops 3 launched with 12 maps, that Treyarch could give us five multiplayer maps per DLC? Huge fan and faithful subscriber. Sincerely, Jags fan from the Dairy State. So Jags fan, I have seen the Jimmy Kimmel's mean tweets 
retweets stuff, and I love watching those videos on occasion. Like, you'll have, like, a celebrity retweets about them, and sometimes it's just hilarious the things that people come up with, and they're, they make for funny videos, which I would understand, like, why you would love to see, like, me do it or other people do it. Uh, it's funny watching those kinds of videos, but here's the thing. I don't get a lot of mean tweets. Like, the majority of the tweets I get are actually very nice. I think it's because on Twitter, uh, people aren't as anonymous. Like, the majority of people that use Twitter, they use it, and they have, like, their actual picture on there. They have their actual name on there a lot of times, and so most of the time, I don't run into mean people on Twitter, but on YouTube, you typically run into some of the more mean and nasty stuff on there because YouTube is well known for being like an anonymous cesspool in the comments, but my comments are typically pretty good and I do moderate them pretty well. I do uh, I do make it so that a lot of specific keywords are blocked out, so if people try to, I'm not going to tell you guys what the keywords that get blocked out are because then people try to get around it, but a lot of racist or homophobic or just mean, nasty, uh, accusatory, uh, all that stuff, like uh, all different kinds of mean, hateful stuff that you could write on YouTube, a lot of those words are just straight up blocked, and therefore, if you're writing these mean and nasty comments, they'll show up like you wrote them, and you'll think, oh boy, I'm so awesome, look how trolly I am, I wrote a mean comment. You're the only person that saw that. Like, nobody else gets that comment besides you. And I like it that way. I like it because uh, sometimes some people consider that to be, like, censoring free speech and whatnot. But, like, the stuff, like, I'm very, very liberal when it comes to, like, things you can say. Say whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me. With the exception of some really extreme stuff. And it's the extreme stuff that I have blocked here on my channel. Because nobody wants to see that stuff written on my YouTube channel or anybody's channel in general. So, uh, yeah. So, as a result, I typically don't get a lot of mean stuff. I just really don't. It's, uh, actually, I have a pretty nice fan base here on YouTube. Now, I can actually go uh, to a specific folder and see all the stuff that I have blocked out, and I can maybe read those, but I don't know. I don't like giving people like that attention, but I will, I will agree with you, Jagsman, that those videos are fun to watch, as well as the second part of your question here is, uh, since Black Ops 3 launched with 12 maps, uh, do I think that Treyarch could give us uh, five multiplayer maps per DLC? Sure. I mean, why not? Why not give us six? Why not seven? Like, they can put out as many maps as they would want per DLC. It does not matter to me, but I will say, I will ask one thing of Treyarch. I would like quality over quantity, right? We have gotten a lot of DLC maps in the past, and typically... DLC maps aren't that great. I think we can all admit it. A lot of DLC maps are not fantastic. Sometimes you get some real gems. Like Grind, for example. Oh, that thing was beautiful. I love Grind. Grind from Black Ops 2, one of the best DLC maps in history. So fantastic. But for every Grind, you probably get two or three pods, right? There's a lot of bad maps that have actually came out of DLC in the past. And so as a result, instead of like trying to meet a specific quota... Try just making sure that the maps that do show up with your DLC are good. And if that means having three new maps for a DLC, fine. As long as all three of those maps are actually great, I'm fine with that. I'd rather have three great maps than five mediocre maps, if that makes any sense. So that's going to be my opinion, I suppose, on the idea of getting more maps per DLC. Thank you, Jags fan, for saying that question. And thank you, the viewer, for watching this week's episode of Dear Nero. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Remember to leave a rating where you guys feel it deserves. And if you guys would like to submit your questions for the next episode of Dear Nero, simply send me a personal message here on YouTube. It's a very simple process guys go to my youtube channel go to the about section and from there you will find a send message button i just ask that you guys preface your message with dear nero put dear nero then your question that way when i'm scrolling through all my messages next week for dear nero i can find the ones that were specifically sent for dear nero as compared to ones that may have been sent for other things it just makes my life a little bit easier and i love you guys for that and uh, i want to thank you guys once again for all the happy birthday wishes yesterday that was definitely very kind of all of you a lot of positivity was sent my way and it made my birthday even better and overall it was a great birthday i had a great 24th birthday and part of that was all the positivity you guys were sending me. So thank you guys for that. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Remember to leave a rating. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.